Hi friends, today I'm going to walk through IaaS based architecture, which means infrastructure as a service based architecture. In my earlier videos, you might already seen how we can design any architecture on the platform as a service. But here we are going to take infrastructure as a service. Just before I start, in case if you have not gone through my previous videos, uh, this is my channel page and uh, you can see here uh, the cloud architectures under the cloud architectures the variety of cloud architectures I'm going to add up more in the existing videos you can see serverless AWS and serverless Azure architectures here and you can see the end-to-end -end architecture for our application similarly for the AWS also vnet to vnet and big data architectures so let us dive into our today's topic which is IaaS based architecture there's no big difference between my previous architectures and uh, today's architecture except that it is going to be infrastructure these are the parameters you need to consider when you are designing any cloud architecture for any type of requirement so few may be applicable or few may not be applicable based on the type of architecture you're dealing with but uh, majority of these is really good for medium sized and large sized applications a uh, few of them are non-functional requirements but you still need to consider them let us have a look monitoring definitely in case if you are going to launch any of your application it should be monitored just not application your infrastructure as well where you are launching it then logging every event whatever the action it is happening between two different services or some communication channel or you know some kind of threats found everything need to be logged then only you can see what went wrong or what is going to be wrong based on that you can take necessary steps security security is definitely must in various ways you can uh, implement the security on the cloud notifications you should have some kind of notification mechanism to alert you in the various scenarios uh, such as when the servers are down or some threats are found to your web application or any other type of application you have launched on your cloud service management operations like how will you manage your services so how easy for the development team or ops team to manage so all those things comes under the service management and operations when the server is down what need to be done that also comes under the operations or something is uh, uh, fishy on your application side or server side what need to be done all this comes under the operations storage and backup so you should have some backup mechanism what if something goes wrong all suddenly you should have your uh, vms or your uh, sql server backups regularly based on your rto and rpo of your application automation so you need to automate the certain things uh, if possible majority of the things uh, so that you know it will be easy to come up with the future enhancement for example currently you are running three vms but in future you may need to run six vms all suddenly based on the traffic it is coming more so then in that case it will be easy for you or you know you need to enhance more servers in the other region rather than the same region then if you have everything is automated in the form of the infrastructure as a code you can simply trigger that events so you see trigger that code so that your machines will be ready it will be that simple in case if you have to do it manually there will be more scope for the human errors uh, that is the reason automation is always good rules and uh, policies you should always define some rules and responsibilities at the same time you should have policies under your azure or aws so that you can easily manage and manage your rules uh, mechanism and only the certain users can operate certain things if someone compromised and you have given all the privileges to that particular user it will be really tough to handle such kind of situations that is the reason you can give the responsibilities to individuals uh, based on the need rather than giving full-fledged permissions coming to the policies like uh, your policies um, maybe something related to the passwords or many other things so you should always define those type of policies so that you know everything is under the uh, compliance coming to the high availability what if you are launching the application and if it is not uh, highly available 
maybe you have a sla of 99.99 percent from your customer to mean is that you should have the high availability strategy as well so the next one is disaster recovery in case if something goes wrong in that particular reason where you have launched your applications then what is your disaster recovery strategy failover in case if the server is failed then what is the failover mechanism you have all these type of parameters need to be considered while you are architecting for any type of requirement so moving on uh, frankly speaking in the coming architecture way uh, i'm not covering all these topics but i will come up with the more architectures which considers high availability disaster recovery failover all these type of mechanisms but in this uh, architecture i covered high level uh, now let me show you here so I, I'm launching one web application. If you see, uh, this is the place where I'm launching my web application. I have three VMs. If you take only one VM, you have the SLA of 99.99%. I mean, three nines. In case, if you want to increase your SLA, that means decrease your downtime, then you have to add more VMs. That's where we are adding more VMs. So in case if your SLA is more, then you have to add more and more servers in the other regions or other availability zones. Coming to here, this is a load balancer. Based on your load, it will manage uh, the traffic between the VMs. And coming to the backend, I'm using only one VM for the SQL server. If you have gone through my patch based architectures, I have used Azure SQL here uh, and here app services so that you don't need to manage any of these servers and high availability disaster recovery backups everything will be taken care by the cloud provider which is azure here but as we are managing the vms you should be responsible for all these high availability failovers disaster recovery backups everything so now sql server i'm taking only one vm that means uh, your, if your VM is down, definitely your SQL Server will be down. For that, you have different mechanisms like uh, SQL Server clustering. Uh, in that, again, you know, you have active active mode, active passive mode, all those mechanisms will come. But in this case, I'm just only considering one SQL Server VM. But in future, definitely I'll come up with more uh, uh, VMs, which supports more high availability and more disaster recovery strategies so coming to this uh, this is all under the vm so if you want to communicate uh, between the vm machines uh, you are using the service endpoint this is not publicly exposed it is only uh, under the private cloud and if you want to connect to the sql server definitely from your on premises uh, you want to connect like maybe the developers or maybe uh, some production operations guys wants to connect to this sql server then in that case what is the way then you can establish a site to site, to site or point to site or express to type of connection so that you can connect to that but this is not publicly explore exposed to the uh, any uh, guys they can't directly interact only within the vnet till it can be interacted so that you are providing more security your data is more protected and then coming back to this one now in case if you want to uh, expose to the open world like if you have launched web application that's where you are using application gateway it is going to connect to the load balancer and it is going to bring whatever you need under the application gateway there is one more uh, major advantage that is web application firewall uh, you can enable the web application firewall which protects your complete web applications from uh, various threats uh, you can name it like ghost root or you know we can uh, if you are following OWASP guidelines all those things will be protected fr fr from all those threats it will be protected next one is the content delivery network in case if you are launching your web application in the multiple regions and then you want to load the content as per the region or geo then you can enable the CDN if it is not you don't need to enable the CDN coming to the DNS uh, if you want to resolve your domain into the IP internally, then you can configure the DNS. Uh, coming to backend, like uh, one is storage, um, a blob storage, you are using to backup your images. In case if you want to backup your VM images of uh, your application or of your SQL server, you can use a blob storage. Uh, and there are different uh, ways under the storage, you can select one of them. Coming to the uh, non-functional or few other functional, definitely Active Directory to support your rules and uh, responsibilities like authentication and authorization to your Azure, not to your application. For your application, authentication authorization will be maintained by your application logic. But what about uh, all the resources you have launched on the Azure? For those, you are maintaining a 
Azure Active Directory. Your employees can be initiated to with some certain roles and responsibilities so that they will take care of it. Key Vault to maintain your certificates and stuff, you can use Key Vault. Network security groups to protect from the uh, protect your applications from the various security threats. Maybe you can block your IPs and stuff. Uh, you can use that NSZ security center to monitor regularly your applications. You can use in case if there are any threats found, immediately it will notify. Uh, Azure monitoring so you can monitor uh, continuously your uh, VMs whenever it is down. If you want to get an alert, you can. Uh, configure that as well vpn gateway to connect to your uh, vnets from your on premises uh, cost management like if you definitely this is one of the major thing you always need to consider right so cost management uh, usually will help you to uh, manage your cost like where it is going higher if you have to optimize any resources uh, there is a uh, azure advisor which will really help you to downgrade your application when it is not needed it will give you all type of recommendations then coming to the billing uh, uh, alerts so if you want to uh, get an alert whenever like thousand dollars is crossed or two thousand dollars is crossed then you can configure that so that you will be notified and you will take necessary precautions for that azure sentinel is like for the multiple enterprises in case if you have uh, so big applications and in the multiple enterprises you can use uh, it is as a sim sim tool siem so it can uh, con uh, continuously monitor all your security centers or vms or enterprises and then uh, if it finds any threats it will alert you and it is it got like artificial intelligence bots which can uh, detect the potential threats or the, the threats which are already triggering so <clears throat> next one is azure devops under the azure devops you can configure your whole uh, check-in mechanism for uh, from your application developers not only that azure devops has a lot more features like say you can maintain kanban boards or you can maintain your sprint plans then moving on you can check in the code you can uh, also uh, trigger the builds and then you can go on with the Trigger, triggering the builds to the production or UAT or your testing. So all those things can be configured under the Azure DevOps. So ARM is Azure Resource Manager, which is uh, IAC, Infrastructure as a Code. You can either use ARM or Terraform. The Notification Hub, you can alert for the variety of things like if the servers have gone down or, you know, if the um, uh, if you have push notifications, all those stuff, you can use the Notification Hub. This is a, at a nutshell when you want to design a architecture so i'll come up with more architectures uh, like by using the high availability disaster recovery failovers uh, that i'll cover in the next video thanks for watching my videos